So the first question is, what are the long-term psychological effects of bullying on individuals? Bullying can give a long-term effect such as PTSD and suicidal thoughts and also low self-esteem and confidence. Second is, how does bullying impact academic performance and social development? Since they feel insecure by themselves, they will feel discouraged to be active on class because they will think that their bullies will judge them by their appearances and also by their answer. Can self-defense training empower victims of bullying? If so, how? Yes, because since they learn self-defense, they can defend themselves without any fears against their bullies. What are the benefits of incorporating self-defense techniques into anti-bullying programs? So, since it is school, we all know that bullies cannot be avoided and victims should be able to learn self-defense so they can stand up for themselves and also regain their self-esteem. What role does bystander intervention play in preventing and addressing bullying? Being a eyewitness to a situation in a bully can be a big advantage and help to the victim because they have someone that, that can prove themselves that they are a victim. How does self-defense education contribute to creating a safer school environment? Since students learn self-defense, they will not feel discouraged to defend themselves and also in a school environment, it is important that students should learn to stand up by themselves. Are there any legal implications for using self-defense techniques in response to bullying? Um, I think juvenile law. Many minors use juvenile law to take advantage to those who are already in legal age because they think that they are minors, so those who are in legal age, they cannot... Um, do something against to those who are younger than them. What are some effective self-defense strategies for different types of bullying scenarios? Um, martial arts, they also teach self-defense and also there are some youth organizations that may help the students to stand up by themselves. How can schools and communities work together to promote self-defense skills among you? Uh, building a youth organization for those students that wants to learn self-defense and those victims that are not be able to um, defend themselves against the bullies. How does self-defense training foster resilience and mental well-being in victims of bullying? So, yung mga naging victims, since natuto sila ng self-defense, they should be able to fight back in a right way. Not because they learn self-defense means they can fight back in a physical way. Can self-defense education help reduce instances of cyberbullying and harassment? Actually, it depends because there are some victims that they keep up to themselves what the cyberbullying occurs to them and the school will not be able to help them because the, the victim does not inform them. What are the ethical considerations of teaching self-defense to children and adolescents? So the ethical consideration is learning that self-defense should not be used into violence only by using it in a right way. So the first question is, what what are the long-term psychological effects of bullying on individuals? Okay, so I believe that uh, the long-term psychological effects of um, bullying to individuals is that might might damage their self-esteem. So you see, um, it's important, especially for students their age, to develop um, uh, good self-esteem and to be able to see themselves in. Um, in a good way. So if there are, if the kids or if the students are bullied, especially on their younger age, there's a possibility that uh, there might be an impact on their self-esteem and therefore they might be able to see themselves and their worth as to what it truly is. So, so the second one is, how does bullying impact academic performance and social development? Mm -hmm. So first for academic performance, um, 
it might uh, or bullying might affect uh, their academic performance because um, the students won't feel motivated to be uh, to, or to do to be at their best or to do their best in especially in school and their activities and um, it might also um, affect them in a way that they won't be able to focus on their academics because of course the emotional damage that, and burden that it might cost them and for the other ones with academics and the other one is um, social development uh, in terms of social development um, critical I mean your age is a very critical age because that's when you try to develop yourself and um, that's when you try to um, your identity. That, that's when um, you actually develop your own identity. So if that has not been developed, then uh, that, that might actually have an impact on how they, they see themselves as an individual. The third question is, can self-defense training empower victims of bullying? If so, how? Well, I think that um, the training when it comes to um, self-defense can actually help them. Not because they'll be able to fight those bullies physically. I don't think that's really the right, um, that's the right way to see things. But I think it would help because um, through, uh, through self-defense or through learning self-defense, the students will be able to develop um, values like patience and um, discipline. And um, that would help them become stronger, and they'll be, they'll be able to help them uh, be calm and uh, be able to manage um, bullying when the, if ever that would happen again. But um, it also will give them uh, a sense of, how do you call this, that they will be feeling more secured knowing that if ever the bullying comes to its um, highest point, let's say the bullies are becoming physical about it, then they know that they will be able to handle it because they are trained to do so. so Number four is, what are the benefits of incorporating self-defense technique into anti-bullying programs? What are the benefits? Okay, I think the benefits of incorporating um, uh, self-defense technique to uh, into bullying program into bullying program is that uh, it's a very realistic approach because definitely bullying is um, something that is really happening uh, nowadays. We see it every day. It happens to students, even to adults uh, sometimes, even on online through social media platforms. And because people nowadays feel that when they're online, they have the freedom to be able to bully someone because uh, they won't be identified or they would remain their identity would remain to be hidden but I think it will help the program because it will really address um, the needs of the students to be able to conquer uh, the, uh, or to be able to um, to uh, approach the situation if ever it, um, this happened to them so it's very timely and at the same time um, it is definitely important uh, to be to be included because of the need okay of course the, the, we base the curriculum in school uh, depending on how um, the Department of, of Education sees the needs of the students so since um, Bullying is very rampant nowadays, and it's really something that should be incorporated to this kind of programs. A safer school environment. Mm -hmm. Well, so, um, it's important, of course, for students to feel that um, school is their second home, and that won't happen unless uh, they don't feel at ease or they don't feel at home in the place, and that would happen when bullying and things like that are happening around them. So if um, it is something, if, if the students feel secured because they can feel that they can protect themselves when that uh, situation arises, um, then they will be able to focus on their academics, they will be able to focus on developing themselves as an individual. So yes, therefore it's very important. It really creates um, uh, an environment for, which, is, which will be conducive for the students to actually grow like plants. Number eight is, are there any legal implications for using self-defense technique in response to bullying? Well, yes, I think so. Because, of course, um, not because you're bullied that you can do this technique, especially to someone who doesn't know how to, to actually respond back to you in the same manner. Like, for instance, um, I, I'm not really sure, though, about the, the details on, in terms of the legality of it, like how far can you actually go. But I think the safe thing to do is just at least try not to kill them. I mean, just in case, um, I mean, or just you just really have to be careful that to, to give, uh, like, have physical damage to the other person. Of course, the idea or the purpose is just for them to avoid bullying you, or if it becomes physical, just for you, uh, you to avoid their attacks. But when it comes to the legality, I'm not really quite sure about it, to be honest. 
So number nine, what are some effect? What are some effective self defense strategies for different types of bullying scenarios? Well, for uh, this one, I'm not. I don't think I'm actually in the right position to answer that because I myself have has not been. I haven't been trained uh, with any um, techniques when it comes to self defense. But yeah, like what I said earlier, as long as you will avoid um, extreme damage to the person, person physically, like for example, like what if the person can't walk after then. So I think that could be the something to consider. But when it comes to the details, or what would be the best thing to do, uh, maybe. I cannot tell you about the techniques because I'm not really trained about it, but as long as it won't really kill the person, it won't really affect them in a really in a in an extreme way. How can school and how can school and communities work together to promote self defense skills among youth? Mm -hmm. Well when it comes to the school, I believe it has to be included. I'm not sure is it already included in your PE class? Is it included in your PE class? Yes. Yeah. So that way so I think the Department of Education continue on um, implementing this as a part of the curriculum for under hope uh, subject, and then for the community, I think they could also or the um, barangay officials should also train students, or they would they could actually invite um, uh, experts or uh, people who actually teach this to to, to students, because um, that can avoid uh, future problem or future cases in the uh, like for instance rape or. Um, physical assault, things like that. So I think they can actually invite people to do that. They can have trainings done in the barangay to, so that the students will be equipped um, on this kind of technique so that when there's a need for it in the future, then they would know what to do. What are the cultural and societal barriers to implementing self-defense education in mainstream subjects? Cultural and? Cultural... Um, Cultural and societal barriers to implementing self-defense education in mainstream subjects. Uh -huh. Well, I think in mainstream subject, I think the reason or what would be considered as a barrier in implementing this or including this in those uh, subjects is that I think, though we know that bullying is happening and that um, self-defense is very important, I honestly don't think they see it in that level, that it is really, really important. So I think um, some people, some I think people from the Department of Education might think that it's important, but it might not be um, really important. So that uh, that's why they're not really um, implementing this, for instance, for language uh, subjects, also for uh, other subjects aside from who. I don't think that, like I myself, I don't really see it in the curriculum. So I think the barrier could be the way uh, people from the higher ops, from, from, from those who are deciding on the curriculum, don't see it as something of great importance. But then... Um, it's actually a good thing that uh, this one could be included. I mean, it's not like 50% of the subject, but maybe uh, it, it could also be added uh, to, to all the subjects so that we, when they're trying to implement something, then it will really be um, taken seriously by the students. I mean, they will really work on it. Um, they will remain focused on learning it because it's uh, actually implemented and it's um, included in other subjects. But with this being said, I think the barrier could be because uh, lack of awareness or it could also be the way they, um, they see things, how the importance of, of uh, self-defense, and it could also be um, uh, the lack of um, trainers to be able to do so, because of course, you cannot teach something that you don't know, and I think um, in a school, most likely, it would only be um, the hope teachers or, well, who don't know how to do that, and also other teachers, but I don't think there will be good, a good amount in terms of number, so I think... <clears throat> I think uh, the, 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 the Department of, Je of Education should spend more budget on actually training the teachers first. So, of course, once all the teachers are equipped uh, with the knowledge on how to execute those procedures, then it's something that once they have it, then they can definitely share it to their students. Like what we said, uh, we cannot share something that we don't have. How does self-defense training foster resilience and mental well-being in victims of bullying? Mm. We can uh, I can foster resilience and and mental well -being. and mental well-being to um, victims of bullying because uh, their their mind will be distracted and it will not be focused on the situation or the thing that happened to them. Um, sometimes it takes uh, something or an activity for the person to actually divert their attention and time to something else. For instance, if you have been an, uh, a victim of bullying, it will really impact you, like deep within you, 
you will be affected physically, emotionally, even mentally, psychologically. So if there is like an outlet for you to do things so that you won't focus on what happened to you in the past and you can just move forward, then I think that would help you and it will also help you in a sense that um, it helps a person become well disciplined and to become healthy. And when you are healthy with self-discipline and when you see things more positively, which is something that we can acquire through um, uh, learning self-defense, then it's something that will really impact you in those aspects or help you in those aspects. Rather. Can self-defense education help reduce instances of cyberbullying and harassment? Yes, I think so. Because of course, victims or... Uh, no, uh, the people who are doing this kind of harassment and bullying to other people, I think, are being empowered with the idea or the fact that no, or with the fact that the other person won't fight, and they, uh, the uh, the other person will just accept um, the bullying or the the, uh, the bullying that those people are doing to the victims. So, if those victims know for a fact, or if those um. Uh, bullies would know for a fact that oh these people would uh, or this person would actually do something about it uh, he or she would fight if needed so I don't think I can bully her or him then um, they will not feel free or they wouldn't feel that free to even start doing the act so I think in, in short um, in a simple uh, way to say it is that uh, you will only be more susceptible to bullying if you allow yourself to be bullied so if the bullies know that you're not that person to be bullied and I don't think that would still do that to you. So, what are the ethical considerations of teaching self-defense to children and adolescents? Uh -huh. uh, the ethical considerations in teaching self-defense to children and and, um, and, adolescents. and adolescent is that the it has to be or they have to be informed of um, the proper way to execute it because of course if it's not executed in the right way it might create damage to the other person uh, forever and also um, they should know when it's the best time to do it so I think um, it's important uh, that we that the people who will be training this um, students and kids and adolescents would know that uh, or would actually make them attend seminars first or um, it would be included in uh, the learning program that um, they should know when to do it, how what is the proper way to do it, and when is the time not to do it. Okay, so I think it's important that they're clear when they are teaching those guidelines. Otherwise, um, the the adolescents and the kids might not actually do it proper way, and we don't like that. It will really create bad impact. So for the last question. How can incorporating self-defense into mainstream subjects promote a culture of respect, em empathy, and understanding? Oh. Well, adding this to uh, those subjects can promote empathy and understanding because uh, first they would know uh, when they know when, when when they know the situations or when it's the best time for them to use it, then they would um, avoid or students would actually see the importance of not bullying their classmates or not bullying other people and um, it, it will also help them to develop a sense of man, um, sense of um, you know, discipline especially in managing their time because of course if it, this will be included then it means that uh, they have to work on it more so it means that they need time to do it they need the effort and the strength to do it so um, it's something like sports, like basketball and other sports. It's, it promotes uh, discipline to students. So um, if this will be included to all those subjects, then uh, for sure it will really uh, benefit them. Ano ang mga pangmatagal ang epekto ng pangaapi sa kaisipan ng mga tao? The long-term effects of the of bullying is that uh, maraming estudyante ang madedepress or magkakaroon sila ng anxiety at as time goes by, mas mapapatanong sila sa sarili nila kung deserve ba nila mabuli or talagang yung, may, yung ibang tao lang talagang may problema. So number two is, paano nakaka-apekto ang pangaapi sa pagganap sa baaralan at pag-unlad pag ng pakikisalamuha? Uh, Makaka-apekto ang bullying sa estudyante. Um, base nga dun sa madedepress sila or magkakaroon sila ng anxiety, mawawalan sila ng gana pumasok or mawawalan sila ng gana makipag-interact sa ibang tao. Number three is, 
Makakapagbigay buhay ba ang pagsasanay sa self-defense sa mga biktima ng pang-api? Kung gayon, paano? Oo, kasi kapag nag-aral tayo ng self-defense, mas malalaman natin ang mga responsibilities natin. Mas mapapawiden yung mga, ah, yung critical thinking skills natin. Ah, makakatulong to para sa malalaman natin na kaya nating saluin na sarili, na, sarili natin anytime. <clears throat> so, number four. Ano ang mga benepisyo ng pagpasok ng mga teknik sa self-defense sa programa laban sa pang-aapi? Uh, ang magiging benefits nito kasi matututo tayong lumaban in a right way naman. Number five is, paano makakatulong ang pagsasanay sa self-defense sa pagpapalakas ng kumpiyansa at bukupahalaga ng sarili ng, sa sarili ng mga tao? Uh, tulad nga na sinabi ko kanina, uh, ma lalaman natin sa sarili natin na kaya natin saluhin ng sarili natin at confident tayo na anytime, kahit saan tayo pumunta, alam natin sa sarili natin na may ilalaban tayo. So, number six is, ano ang papel ng pagtugon ng mga tagapanood sa pagpigil at pagsasagawa laban sa pang-aapi? Karamihan kasi ngayon, parang wala na lang pakialam yung nakakakita or nakakarinig. At uh, yung iba nga ay nakikisali pa. Pero, nasa Uh, perception ko pa rin kailangan magsabi tayo sa otoridad o mas nakakatanda sa atin para mas masolusyonan pa yung bullying o yung nagiging problema sa komunidad. So, paano nakakatulong ang edukasyon sa self-defense sa paglikha ng mas tigtas na kapaligiran sa paaralan? Uh, sa pag-aaral ng self-defense, tuturoan naman tayo doon kung paano natin gagawin ng mga responsibilities natin tsaka yung mga obligations natin bilang isang estudyante. So, number eight, may, mayroon bang legal na implikasyon ang paggamit ng mga teknik sa self-defense bilang tugon sa pang-aapi? Meron, kasi ang self-defense naman, hindi naman natin kailangan gumamit talaga ng any weapons para lang masabi natin na ipagtanggol natin ang sarili natin. Kasi kapag gumamit tayo ng weapons, parang lalabas na rin na mali tayo. So, number nine, ano ang ilang epektibong estratehiya sa self-defense para sa iba't ibang uri ng, iba't ibang uri ng sitwasyon ng pang-aapi? I think the best way for that is that uh, kailangan unang-una sa lahat hanggat maaari umiwas na lang tayo kaysa makigulo pa. So, um, number 10, paano maaaring magtulungan ang mga paaralan at komunidad upang maitaguyod ang kasanayan sa self-defense sa, sa, sa gitna ng kabataan? Kailangan, uh, siguro sa pagbuo ng program kasi maraming kabataan ng magiging willing or interested sumali sa ganun kasi yun naman ay para din sa sarili nila. So, number 11, ano ang mga hadlang na kultural at panlipunan sa pagsasagawa ng edukasyon sa self-defense sa pangunahing paksa? When it comes to cultures kasi sa mga kabataan yun, iba't iba ng perception eh. So, parang ang perception ng iba eh, kailangan lumaban tayo kasi ginaganon nila ta ah, minamasama nila tayo. So, ang iba naman, umiwas na lang tayo kaysa mapagulo pa. Number 12, paano nagpapalakas at nagpapabuti ng kaisipan at kalusugan ang pagsasanay sa self-defense ng mga biktima ng pang-aapi? Uh, siguro yung sa, tulad nga sinabi ko, critical thinking skills, uh, doon mas mapapalawak natin pag-isip natin. Yung sa pangangatawan natin, mas may exercise tayo. Number 13, makakatulong ba ang edukasyon sa self-defense upang bawasan ang insidente ng cyberbullying at pangkaharas? Oo, kasi kapag nag-aral tayo nun, uh, mas malalaman natin ang responsibilities natin. Uh, tsaka matutulungan natin ang sarili natin na uh, malaman kung gaano ba kahirap mabuli or ano bang mga consequences bilang isang, uh, bilang isang mambubuli. So, number 14, ano ang mga etikal na dapat isaalang-alang kapag tinuturuan ang mga bata at kabataan tungkol sa self-defense? Uh, siguro yung kailangan well-trained ka talaga or as much as possible, kailangan na may license ka para in case na may mapahamak, alam natin sa sarili natin yung kung anong gagawin natin. So, for the last question, paano makakatulong ang pagsasama ng self-defense sa pangunahing paksa? upang itaguyod ang kultura ng respeto, empatiya at pangunawa. Makakatulong ang self-defense sa pag-build ng respect sa paraan ng uh, tuturuan nga tayo ng, uh, ng leader natin kung paano rumespeto at sasabihin sa atin kung ano ba mga responsibilidad natin bilang isang learner or student ng isang uh, komunidad. Ano ang pangatagal ang epekto ng pangaapi sa kaisipan ng mga tao? Mm. And trauma. Paano nakaka-apekto ang pang-aapi sa pagganap sa paaralan at sa pag-unlad ng pakikasalamuhan? Um, 
una, hindi sila makafocus sa kanilang mga activities or uh, sa lessons at sa iba pang mga um, mga academic uh, activities na ginagawa sa isang classroom. While sa pakikipag-interact, nahihirapan sila dahil may epekto yung uh, pambubuli sa kanila. Kung bag nawawalan sila ng, uh, ng amor o para makisalumuha, nawawalan sila ng ng yeah, no, so number three, makakapagbigay buhay ba ang pagsasanay sa self-defense sa mga biktima ng pangaapi? Kung gayon, paano? Of course, nakakapagbigay buhay ito sa mga uh, biktima ng bullying. Dahil mat- dito, matututo sila ng mga uh, disiplina, principles, at kung paano ipagtanggol ang kanilang mga sarili sa mga ganitong uh, uri ng issue or So, number four, <clears throat> ano ang mga benepisyo ng pagpapasok ng mga teknik sa self-defense sa mga programa laban sa pangaapi? Katulad nga ng sinabi ko, matututo sila ng mga disiplina kung paano ipagtanggol ang kanilang mga sarili at uh, kung paano ipagtanggol ang kanilang mga sarili at kung paano umiwas sa kung paano umiwas sa ganoong sitwasyon kapag ikaw ay halimbawa napunta. Paano nakakatulong ang edukasyon sa self-defense sa paglikha ng mas ligtas na kapaligiran sa paaralan? Dito, hinuhubog ang, ang isang utak ng isang individual upang lalong uh, lalong lumawak ang kanilang isipan sa ganitong particular na issue upang bigyan sila ng mga upang bigyan sila ng awareness kung ano dapat gawin at hindi dapat para para sa ganitong uh, sitwasyon or what we call bullying. Yeah. Mayroon bang legal na implikasyon ang paggamit ng mga teknik sa self-defense bilang tugon sa pang-aapi? Um, for me, meron. Dahil sa iba't ibang perspective ng mga uh, lawmakers, dito pinagdedebatihan kung tama nga bang i-implement ito. Kung tama nga bang uh, ituloy pa ito, ituloy pa itong program na ito para sa para sa mga biktima ng bullying at mga nabubuli. Paano maaaring magtulungan ang mga paaralan at komunidad upang itaguyod ang kasanayan sa self-defense sa gitna ng kabataan? Katulad ng edukasyon, nagbibigay din sila ng awareness. Kumbaga, sila yung susi para uh, mabig- mabuksan ang ating mga isipan para sa ganitong issue, para uh, mabigyan, mabigyan tayo ng uh, tamang, tamang gagawin para dito. Oh my God, hindi ako satisfied sa mga ginagawa ko dito. I'm very sorry. First time ko to. Paano nagpapalakas at nagpapabuti ng kaisipan at kalusugan ng pagsasanay sa self-defense ng mga biktima ng pangaapi? Well, sa pagtuturo naman ng self-defense, uh, hindi lang ito physical agad. Kumbaga, pina, uh, kumbaga, tinuturo muna yung core or yung principle. Dahil dito, uh, mahuhubog ang ating isipan at magiging malinaw para sa atin ang, ang lahat ang hindi paggawa nito, ang pag-iwas dito, at ang mga dapat gawin. Tapos sa physical naman, uh, dahil masasabi natin uh, makakahugog tayo ng um, tawag dito. Hindi ko alam yung term. Uh, sa physical, physically naman, uh, magiging uh, I think, physically fit because ginagamit, because of the training, I think. I think so. <laughs> Makakatulong ba ang edukasyon sa self-defense upang bawasan ang insidente ng cyberbullying at pangharas? Pardon? Pardon? Um, makakatulong ba ang edukasyon sa self-defense upang bawasan ang insidente ng cyberbullying at pangharas? Oo naman. Dahil sa edukasyon, matututo tayo ng... Um, mat, katulad ng sinabi ko, matututo tayo kung paano umiwas, uh, um, kung ano dapat gawin during the issue or ang mga dapat hindi gawin. First question, what are the long-term psychological effects of bullying on individuals? Mm, I think everyone knows the answer and it is trauma. And the reason kung bakit ito yung long-term effect is because
because uh, for example, I was getting hurt and uh, or I was getting bullied. And sa pagbubuli na yon, it can uh, pwede siyang tumatak sa isip mo and it can cause trouble. How does bullying impact academic performance and social development? Probably the confidence of the student kasi uh, yung pagbubuli na yon, pwede maging mag-cause ng uh, pagbaba ng confidence ng studyante sa sarili niya and when it comes naman to social sorry, uh, psychological psychological is yung uh, anxiety to depression Can self-defense feel the power of victims of bullying is so hard? Yes, it is at long, as long as it is necessary because uh, pagpalagay mo naman, ikaw ba, ikaw ba nasasaktan, hindi ka maglala, hindi ka lalaban. So, I think the better way, the better way to uh, fight, fight that is self-defense. What are the benefits of incorporating self-defense techniques into anti-bullying programs? Ang benefits nito is kung, is kung paano makaka, magig, kung paano matututo ang isang, ang isang individual to fight for his or her child to those bully na yun, na nanakit sa kanya. How can self-defense feeling build confidence and self-esteem in individuals? Uh, I think uh, sa pagbigay niya confidence is yun na kung paano lumaban ng estudyante. And because of that, uh, hindi lang siya through physical siya lalaban, kundi through psychological na may man mindset siya na ay, ay, kaya, ay, maalam akong lumaban, so I will push this. What role does bystander intervention play in preventing and addressing bullying? I think the role of being a bystander for, for preventing bullying is uh, yung uh, makakatulong sila sa pagdagdag ng kaalaman sa mga ebidensya. How does self-defense training post how certainly as a mental good behavior For this one, I think the better way is to uh, not tolerate bullies, but tolerate those people who have courage and strength to speak up for themselves. Kasi, uh, I think with that, yun yung magiging uh, magpapatibay sa mga victim ng bully, how they, kung paano nila may speak up na yung mga nangyari sa kanila, and, how, and pagdating naman sa kanilang mentality, I think it's how they will be strong and how, we, how they will block those uh, negativity that they uh, suffered, that they encountered to their minds. Can self-defense education contribute to instances of cyberbullying cyber and harassment? Yes, of course. Uh, when it comes to cyberbullying, I think uh, hindi siya to share the cyberbullying is one time. So hindi siya makik hindi ka makikipag-physical to online. But uh, instead of uh, makikipag-away ka through comments, I think the better way is to uh, create an online advocacy that how, how uh, the victims of those bullying will fight for themselves. And pagdating naman sa harassment, I think uh, doon mas, ma mas better, mas maganda ito yung uh, physical, uh, physical self-defense. What are the ethical considerations of teaching self-defense to children and adults? I think the ethical ways is uh, yun na. Yung yun, ulit ulit ko, speak up. That, was, that is the very and better first thing to teach for the for those people who suffered in bullying. Kasi, um, through speaking up, I think uh, yung mga nang suffer sa bullying, mas magiging yung confidence nila na uh, masabi yung mga nangyari sa kanila. So second naman is yung self-defense. Kasi with self-defense, I think uh, they have the courage to fight back. And for third, I think uh, unity yung pagsasama, interlock yung mga. Uh, para naman uh, hindi lang ikaw magaling hindi, ka, hindi lang ikaw magaling uh, mag-speak up, hindi lang ikaw maging, magaling mag maging mag uh, mag self-defense, but also magaling ka rin uh, makisama to unite for those people na nabuli them and doon naman sa people na nag-a-advo kasi na uh, stop bullying and let's, let's be friends. Incorporating self-defense into mainstream subjects promote a culture of respect, empathy, and understanding. I think the better way to promote it is uh, in 
influencing. Uh, so, um, through influencing, those people who suffer the bullying will uh, have a courage to uh, gain, uh, gain trust, gain confidence, and gain how, gain how to fight up for, for themselves. And with that, uh, the, respect, the respect for each one of those people will continue and keep influencing so that keep influencing for those people who, who also suffer the bullying and those people that uh, that uh, implementing stop bullying and with that uh, all of all of this uh, bull all of this suffering and encountering for those bully will uh, not let's not say end but uh, the better than and to influence also students and with mga nang bully na stop stop bullying and let's just be Ano ang mga pangmatagal ang epekto ng pangaapi sa kaisipan ng mga tao? Ang mga pangmatagal ang epekto ng pangaapi sa kaisipan ng tao is pwedeng magkaroon ng stress yung isang tao. Tapos, tas magdudulot din yun na pwedeng sa anxiety and depression tapos bababa yung self-esteem niya. Okay, next question is, ano ang mga beneficyo ng, ng pagpapasok ng mga teknik sa self-defense sa mga programa laban sa pangaapi? Um, pwedeng magkaroon ng self-confidence at saka ng tiwala sa sarili kapag alam mo yung self-defense. Paano maaari magtulungan ang mga paara at komunidad, at komunidad upang itaguyod ang kasanayan sa self-defense sa gitna ng kabataan? Pwede silang magtulungan by paggawa ng program about self-defense sa itong ano, yung pwedeng seminar or trainings sa mga kabataan. Thank you. What are the long-term psychological effects of bullying on individuals? Loss of self-confidence and loss of societal trust will be the long-term effects of bullying. Um, the second question is, how does bullying with academic performance and social development? Well, if someone is bullied, he will never enjoy academic life or school life. So, pwede magkadalog? Yes. Okay, so most likely magdara-drop yung estrogen. Ayaw niya makikita yung kanyang mga bully. And the third question po, can self-defense really empower victims of bullying? So, how po? Okay. Ang self-defense can empower bullying victims in a way that it can restore a person's self-confidence. Because knowing that you know something, alam mong meron kang alam, na hindi naman basta-basta na-acquire lang kung saan yung, na yung knowledge na yun, definitely, it will boost your self-confidence. So it can empower a bullying victim. The second, I, um, what are the benefits of incorporating self-defense techniques into anti-bullying programs? Ano pong mga anti-bullying programs natin? Marang tayong anti-bullying programs. So, ang um, ano, benefits? Ano? Um, yes po. Benefits nun, syempre, ang mga anti-bullying programs kasi ay, ang aim niyan ay ma-restore ng isang, uh, ma-restore ang self-confidence ng isang bullied victims. Ma-restore ka niya self-respect. So, ang benefit ng incorporate mo yun is mas madali sa isang bullied victim or bullying victim yung magkaroon siya ng confidence at tiwala sa rin na kaya niya ang isang sitwasyon. How can self-defense training build confidence and self-esteem in individuals? Well, katulad na sabi ko nina, if you know something, and you know that that certain knowledge is not easily acquired by other people, syempre, you have greater confidence. Kahit alam mong may alam ka na hindi nila alam. Um, what role does bystander inter intervention play in preventing and addressing bullying? Bystander, inter ano? bystander intervention? Yes, ko. Okay. So, medyo mahirap na question kasi in our society, bystanders do not immediately help. So, if ever, as a bystander, most likely ang bystander ay stranger. 
if a bystander will intervene in a bullying incident, definitely there will be uh, restored trust in humanity, trust, uh, restored trust in society na mayroon pa rin at tutulong at tutulong sa iyo. Uh, how does self-defense education contribute to creating a safer school environment? Well, definitely, if the students are learned in self-defense, they know how to assess the situation. They know how to get out of a tough situation or they know how to address the situation. So, syempre, kapag ka meron kang alam kung paano ipagtanggol ang sarili mo, uh, mas mahirap sa mga mambuli, mga bullies na gumalaw against you. Especially kapag ka hindi naman marunong self-defense, yung ginamitan niya. So, ang maging consequence niya is mas uh, mas mabigat or mas dapat niyang patunayan talaga na self-defense lang yung ginawa niya. Kasi the, the problem lies in proving that your self-defense is actually a defense. Defense lang talaga. Doon mo, yun, doon mo lang siya ginamit. Especially kapag ka grabe, limbawa, sumunto ka lang ng isa. Ang ano, pinaka gist ng isang ng self-defense, not only to defend yourself, but also mag-foster ka ng respect to community. Kapag ka may respect ka, hindi, maganda sa kanya. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you po. Learning how to protect ourselves through self-defense is important. It's not just about staying safe, but also about feeling strong and, and able to help our family if something bad happens. In conclusion, our interview highlights the multifaceted impact of bullying, emphasizing the need for holistic approaches that address emotional well-being, academic support, and practical self-defense education. By raising awareness and fostering resilience, we can work towards creating safer and more supportive environments for everyone.